Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Golden Girl action figure from the Golden Girl and the Guardians of the Gemstones line of figures by Galoob from 1984. Mattel released the original Masters of the Universe toys in 1982. Although they were popular upon their release, the final push that turned the franchise into one of the biggest in history was the filmation cartoon He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which debuted in September of 1983. For the next few years, He-Man was absolutely unstoppable. His popularity led to many imitators. Other toy companies were manufacturing buff, squatting, almost nude five-and-a-half-inch action figures in the sword and sorcery style that walked very close to the line of trademark infringement. Because professional wrestling was also popular at the time, and many of these buff wrestlers were running around in nothing but shorts and boots just like He-Man, there were also many different lines of wrestling action figures produced in a similar style as well. It was really no surprise. When G.I. Joe was the top-selling toy in the 1960s, there were a multitude of similar military action figures on the toy shelves. The popularity of Star Wars figures in the late 1970s and early 1980s changed the most common format for figures to three and three-quarter inches and led to the creation of dozens of space-themed action figure lines. However, one unexpected action figure line to arrive on the heels of He-Man was Galoob's Golden Girl and the Guardians of the Gemstones. The line was unique because it was a sword and sorcery line geared towards girls. The basic premise of the franchise was that Golden Girl is the defender of Argonia who protects powerful gemstones from the evil Dragon Queen, the ruler of Storm Island, and her cruel and wicked warrior followers. The Golden Girl figures were slightly taller than both the male Masters of the Universe figures and the female figures like Tila and Evil Lynn, but they were clearly designed with Masters of the Universe as their main influence. Toy historians argue about who came out first, She-Ra or Golden Girl. The trademark for She-Ra was filed first, but only by a very small amount of time. Mattel filed for a trademark on October 23rd of 1984, while Galoob filed for a trademark for Golden Girl on November 2nd of 1984, just over a week apart. Collectors still argue about which line arrived in stores first, with the two lines being produced at pretty much the same time, it is very possible that She-Ra arrived in some markets earlier, while Golden Girl arrived in other markets first. Princess of Power was unique at the time because it was not at all common for the manufacturer of a boy's toy line to create a parallel line for girls, but Golden Girl was even more strange because it was practically a parallel girls line for another company's franchise. The Golden Girl figures were similar in design to both the female Masters of the Universe characters and the Princess of Power figures. They had a good bit of articulation at the hip like Tila and Evil Lynn, but they had brushable hair like She-Ra and her crew. The Golden Girl figures could also bend at the knee. Each figure came with a comb, a fabric cape, a shield made of metal, a crown or helmet of some kind, and a weapon. All of the figures except for the two male characters also came with a belt. Golden Girl, the main character from the line, had a silver sword and gold metal shield shaped like a bird with a white gem in the center. Her belt had a small slot that could hold her sword. Both her belt and crown were originally gold, but over the years many of the belts and crowns have turned from gold to a blue-green color making them look tarnished. Her cape was typically white and gold, but I have heard that there is a variation which was partially blue. Many of the figures' capes had a metallic sheen to them, which hasn't held up well over time. Although Galoob tried to go all out with the Golden Girl line by creating a multitude of products, it just wasn't enough. There were 11 figures, 27 outfit sets, two horses and chariots, one palace playset, and I think four tents. And in addition to the toys, there were coloring books, a child-size Halloween costume, a lunchbox, and a board game, plus a calendar, pretend play weapons, find-your-fate books, 
a color form set, and at least a couple of puzzles. Galoob even spent the money to make and air a Golden Girls TV commercial. And usually a sign of a successful toy line, there were knockoff figures of the Golden Girls, but all of this was no match for the Princess of Power. Concept art has turned up for the characters for a proposed second wave of Golden Girl figures, but as far as I know, only one character, Daimondia, has ever turned up, and only a few of them have been found. Apparently, she was only released overseas. Action figures in the 1980s seemed to need a cartoon or movie to build up enough momentum to sell the kind of quantities that would allow for multiple waves of figures. She-Ra was not only able to ride the coattails of Masters of the Universe to some degree, but the She-Ra Princess of Power cartoon also pushed the brand. There was a cartoon planned for Golden Girl, but unfortunately it never made it to production. Although the concept art that I spoke of earlier for a second wave of Golden Girls figures has shown up, and the one figure that did get released in Europe did make it into the stores in a Wave 2 box, sales of Golden Girl simply weren't good enough to keep the line afloat. Now, Golden Girl is a mostly forgotten line with a relatively small but strong following. Did you know about Golden Girl and the Guardians of the Gemstones as a kid? Did you collect them in the 80s? Do you collect them now? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up, and if you have a chance, it would be great if you would share it on social media. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell. As always, thanks for watching.